In this video, I'm going to show you how the z-score 3.0 or greater absolute value is an invalid rule to identify outliers. And then I'll show you the interquartile range rule with a multiplier of 1.5 and 3.0 as applied in SPSS as an effective way to potentially identify an outlier. So what I've done in this demonstration is I've created data that are definitely normally distributed because I've derived them from a computer that produces normally distributed data, a program I should say, and it has a sample size of 1,000. So I've simulated 1,000 cases from a normal distribution and this normal distribution will not produce outliers because its very nature is such that it will only produce cases from the normal distribution. So they're all from the same distribution. So let's look at what this looks like when we do some kind of outlier analysis. Now I should say that there should be no outliers identified in these data because it's been simulated not to have any. So let's see what we find when we actually look at this. I should actually mention that one way to do this is to go into Analyze and Descriptive Statistics and click on Explore and then put in this normal variable into the dependent list and click on Statistics and click on Outliers which will produce a couple of pieces of information that we want and also deselect Stem and Leaf and select on Histogram. Click Continue and click OK. So this is the normally distributed data with no outliers because it's been simulated that way. So if I point out first we get the highest five values and the lowest five values amongst the 1000 cases and we can see that case 1000 has a z-score of 3.23 and case 999 has a z-score greater than 3 and so does 998. So if we use the z-score greater than 3 rule we would find that three cases here should be dealt with some way, who knows, maybe omitted, on the basis that they're greater than 3, but they are not outliers because, again, I generated these data from a routine that produces scores from the normal distribution. If we look at the negative values, which are on this side of the distribution now, or over here, well, actually, here's a nice look at the distribution. You can see how it's very nicely normal. We just have a nice tail on the left side and the right side. There's no skew in these data and yet it's identifying one, two, three, four outliers on the left side, quote unquote, and three outliers on the right side. They are not outliers. Now here's the interquartile range rule applied to these data, which is a better rule than the z-score greater than three. So I hope this demonstration shows you that you should not use the z-score greater than three rule. Here's the interquartile range rule applied in the SPSS routine within Explore. And what happens is, is that SPSS creates this whisker plot and the values that are associated with an interquartile range rule 1.5 multiplier are given a, a circle here. So it's actually identifying a lot of outliers with the interquartile range rule of 1.5 multiplier. And this is not appropriate. Again, these data are normally distributed and there should be no outliers identified in these data, but the interquartile range rule of a multiplier of 1.5 is identifying them as denoted by these circles. Now I should say that the SPSS routine identifies outliers based on two interquartile range rule multipliers, 1.5 and 3.0. And when it identifies an outlier with the interquartile range rule with a multiplier of 3.0, it will give that value a star or an asterisk. In this variable, none of the cases were identified as an outlier with the 3.0 multiplier, as testified by the fact that none of the cases have been labeled with an asterisk or a star. So this analysis is actually identifying no outliers. It's giving you a couple of warning signals that these people are scoring pretty high, but this is based on the 1.5 multiplier. So let me show you an example where there definitely is an outlier in these data, or I should say I manipulated the data such that they would have an outlier. And what I did is I increased the largest positive value from 3.23 to 4.45. Everything else is the same. So the next highest value, 3.10, 3.10, 3.09, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10, 3.10
everything else is the same. All I've done is I manipulated one score to be larger than it was from the normal distribution it was simulated from. So let's check out what SPSS does when it's analyzing for outliers with this variable that has that one manipulated value. So again, of course, the z-score rule is going to identify the same outliers as outliers, even though they're not. But here's that 4.45 value. Here's the histogram. And we can see that the 4.45 is fairly distant from the tail of the distribution. So this is suggesting maybe there's an outlier here. Whereas on this side, there's nothing going on. It's all quite nicely packed together. And here is the interquartile range rule applied with a multiplier of 3.0 and 1.5. SPSS does it automatically. So here are all the 1.5 possible outliers. They're not outliers. But with the 3.0 multiplier, this one was identified as an outlier, and it's case 1,000, which is 4.45 z-score, a value of 4.45. And this is how SPSS demarcates it as an outlier. And I would be concerned with the possibility that this is an outlier. And what to do with that value is, as I recommend in the textbook, is probably you should use Windsorizing rather than deleting the value. Unless, of course, you know for sure that the value 4.45 was inputted incorrectly or they were actually a case that is not supposed to be part of this variable. So this is me demonstrating why the z-score rule of 3.0 or greater is invalid. Don't use it. Use the interquartile range rule. And if you don't want to use the multiplier of 2.2 that I describe in the textbook, fair enough. Just use the 3.0 in SPSS or another program.